These have become a familiar sight in Kenya, especially in urban centers. AIDS kills, use a condom, is their screaming message. Well intended. The problem is, HIV AIDS is not just an urban problem, it is also very rural. It is here that some of Kenya's poorest live. A day's meal is hard to come by, let alone an extra 10 shillings to buy a condom. Poverty provides the opportunity for behavior that increases the incidence of HIV and AIDS. Moreover, many of them cannot even read or write. 80% of all HIV infections are due to sexual contact. The Nyanza AIDS Conference resolved that information about AIDS must be made accessible to the people through civic education. The most important thing is to save lives of people, and therefore we should not be charged at all. For us in Kenya, no further inaction is permissible. Awareness and prevention campaigns are being hampered by climate we are plain speaking about the crisis and measures to alleviate it have not been encouraged. The untenability of our situation is still being denied at many levels. More alarming is the revelation that people are being infected at an earlier age. Over the past 12 months alone, 200,000 new cases of HIV infections have been reported. Of this, over 140,000 occurred in youth below the age of 25. We target the political leaders because the political leadership has a very important role in mobilizing the people. And the professionals have the means and the know-how of doing these things. Uh, we also appeal to the religious leaders because they meet people from day to day. The conference also questioned the role of non-governmental organizations in fighting the epidemic. Participants accused NGO officials of lining their pockets while doing little to fight AIDS. The conference challenged NGOs to embark on civic education campaigns and support community initiatives to care for AIDS orphans and widows. Farida Karone, KTN, Kisumu. Within Nyanza province, nine of the 12 districts have the highest prevalence of HIV and AIDS in Kenya. And here too, sad tales of orphans clinging to each other for consolation can be heart-piercing. At the home of the late Jacob Ogola, young and desolate faces greet you on arrival. Ogola succumbed to AIDS in 1993. His wife Helen lost the battle in July last year. Their eldest son, Kevin Odiambo, only 18, now has to care for his six siblings and the youngest, only six. This boy saw his Kevin's only hope of putting food on the table for his brothers and two sisters. Kevin can make as many as 10 trips to a hero eight kilometers away. He waits for as long as one hour to make five or ten shillings. But his determination to keep his siblings in school and afford them a decent meal gives him the patience to wait for as long as it takes, even under the scorching sun. Realizing that life was slowly slipping away, Helen prepared her eldest son to take over as head of the family, at least psychologically. My mother also was, was settling. She was in prison up to, up to 97 when she died. 98, 98 when she, she passed away. Yeah. So from that time, she told me that she has been suffering from it. From the buy store, Kevin earns 50 to 80 shillings a day. And from this meager amount, he buys food and other basics required in school. You buy 50 shillings. When I buy one karaka of, mm, of maize, you eat it about uh, mm, supper and uh, evening also you can eat it. So, lunch and uh, supper. So, the remaining amount you use for uh, other maize. Kevin got his Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education last year and is still awaiting his results. I'm looking where I can get that job, but there's no way. His siblings are probably too young to understand his predicament. Maybe too young to bear the burden of AIDS. Farida Karone, KTN, Kisumu.